Editing videos on your phone has become very popular recently. It's quick, easy, free. There's all sorts of cool things you can do without opening your iPad, laptop, or desktop. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing InShot and Adobe Premiere Rush. Both great apps for uh, editing on your phone, but each one has its flaws. I'm gonna go through the pros and cons of each one and hopefully help you decide which app to go with in your next edit. Let's jump into it. All right, here I have opened a project in Adobe Premiere Rush. You can see that we've got our timeline here, we've got all our playback buttons up here, and then all of the features for our video editing down here. I like the overall look of it. It's pretty simple. There's a lot of room to work with. You can actually toggle between this timeline view and this, which is more of the standard Adobe look. So number one pro for Adobe, I would say, is their timeline look. This is what a project looks like in InShot. So as you can see, InShot doesn't really have the typical timeline uh, view that you might expect like Adobe does. Um, it sort of works more in mode. So right now we're in video mode and we can scrub through and, and edit our video here. But if we want to look at our music, rather than there being a layer underneath that we could edit, we need to go into music mode. And that's where it brings up the track that we can edit and the features pop up for what we can do with that audio. Same thing with a text layer. If we want to add a text layer, we would just go into text mode. Uh, we would add something here. And then you can see that it's just another layer that we can um, edit here. And there's all kinds of features. If I click on that. All kinds of features that you can do with your uh, text layer. Um, there's filters, stickers that you can place. Uh, you can see we've got a few more features here as I scroll along. There's a lot more that you can do on your phone in InShot, which I would say is a big pro. Uh, Premiere Rush sort of assumes that if you want to do more with your video, then you'll just use the desktop application and do more with it there. Whereas because InShot is only a mobile application, it gives you more options to have special effects on your videos, things like that. The really nice thing about Premiere Rush is it's a mobile application and a desktop application. And so if you have Adobe Creative Cloud uh, with some cloud storage on it, you can actually sync this project up to your Adobe Cloud and then immediately pull it onto another device. So if I'm in the middle of editing, uh, but I want to switch over to my tablet or my laptop, I can do that by clicking this Turn Sync On button in the project settings. And so that's a really nice feature. InShot is only on your phone and you can't even save the project file. It gets saved on your phone for you, um, but that's it. A huge pro for Premiere Rush is the ability to sync to other devices, especially if you're a part of the Adobe Creative Suite. So a, a major pro for me with InShot is the ability to apply an effect to all my clips with a single button. So for example, if I have a clip here and I want to change the transition between what clips, you, you can see that I just put in a crossfade there. Okay. What do you well, think? because most of the videos that I make are slideshows, I like to just have a crossfade for every single transition for every single clip. And I may, you know, tweak that or adjust that uh, as I edit. But it is so nice for me to be able to go to a transition, what do you think? click on it, and then what click do you on think? the double tri check mark, what do you which think? will apply to all. Sorry, that audio is kind of annoying. That double check mark which, uh, will actually apply for every single transition now between clips. As I scroll through here, you can see that it will crossfade for every single one, which I really, really like. Uh, Premiere Rush does not have this feature. Instead, what they have is a multi-select button, which InShot doesn't have. 
and there's a lot of pros to this. But if I if I click on this multi-select, then when I click on these clips, you can see that it's highlighting all of them. And then from there, I can click effect and dissolve as sort of that same crossfade uh, transition that I want to do. And it's really zoomed out on my timeline, so you can't really see. But if I zoom in, you can see this darker portion here just means there's a transition between the clips here. And um, it applied it to all of the clips that I clicked on. So the con with this is if you have a ton of clips in your timeline and you want to apply it to all, uh, in InShot, you do that with a single button. With Premiere Pro or Premiere Rush, you would need to click on every single one. So in my mind, it's a major pro for InShot. A con for InShot is the ads. It's a freemium application. So you can buy the pro version and it comes with additional features that you can add. I actually have the free version. As you can see, I have ads here. And I think every time I export, I have to watch an ad, which doesn't take too long. And it actually has, I would say, sufficient enough uh, material and features on the free version. For what I need, uh, the free version works great. So like I mentioned, I like to create family slideshows on my phone. So I'm working with a lot of images. And I would say a major con for me with InShot is that there's not an easy, quick way to do the Ken Burns effect. And basically what the Ken Burns effect is, is when you have an image start in one position and then by the end of the clip uh, it's zoomed in a little bit it kind of gives motion and makes the picture feel a little bit more alive now that's not to say that you can't create that effect in InShot there's keyframing inside of InShot you just click on this button here and you go to wherever you want the next keyframe to be and you can add it and and then with your fingers you can actually zoom in on your clip and then between those two keyframes it will adjust properly are you living the life yeah so it's definitely possible to have the ken burns effect it's just not easy in premiere rush the ken burns effect is applied by default to all of the images so you can see here uh, but I actually don't like the, the way that it does this. It, it doesn't give me a ton of control, and, and there probably is a way to control it on the desktop version. But I, I don't like that it stops before the end of the clip transitions. You can see that it sort of eases in and then eases out and stops before the next clip starts. And so the feel of the Ken Burns effect just doesn't really cut it for me. So with both applications, if you're looking for the Ken Burns effect and an easy way to do that, I would not recommend either of these applications. All right, another con for me on Premiere Rush is the text layer. Um, and again, this is probably a little bit more customizable on the desktop version of the application, but on my phone, um, if I want to add a new title, it's a little bit tedious and there's not a lot of ways to customize your titles. So I would just go add new graphic and then I can, you know, they've got a bunch of options for me to choose from. I just do a very basic title here, the subtitle, and then I'll usually just delete the subtitle, change the title here. Um, but, and, and it's got all kinds of fonts and everything, which is great. But what it doesn't give you the option to do on your phone is change the location of it, which in my mind is awful. And maybe there is a way that I'm missing, I, but from all the times I've used it, I haven't found a way that you can actually move this title around. Uh, and so in my mind, that's a huge con if you're looking to have titles in your clip and you're only editing on your phone. All right, so another thing that I really like about Premiere Rush is the ability to transition music and crossfade music. And the reason I really like that is that I like to turn down 
the music for videos where someone's talking so that the music's not overpowering the speaker. And as you can see in my timeline here on the bottom layer, the green layer is my music. Um, I've got sort of this gray patch over where the music's cut. And this clip here is turned down. And so there's a nice smooth transition, nice smooth crossfade you can see when I play here. Allie's been riding, riding nice in the bow. And I'm riding a buckle chip. You're riding your what? And so um, that's really nice. Unfortunately, InShot does not have that feature. So you can see here I'm in music mode and I want this middle clip here to be uh, lower volume than the other ones. I have it turned down here and there's not really a good way to cross fade. So there's sort of this sudden cut. Are you living the life? Are you living the life? Hey, give me a it's a little hard to hear with this track, but um, there's not a smooth transition to fade it back up. There are ways around that. I can actually bring this up above to sort of a second layer. I can expand this music out and then I can sort of fade this out and then fade this one in. So they're kind of fading over each other. And uh, so you can hear. Hey, give me a little smile. Again, hard to hear. So those are just some basic pros and cons for InShot and Premiere Rush. I hope that that's helpful. In summary, InShot is a great application, especially if you're looking to do special effects on your phone. You're not looking to edit on any other device. Premiere Rush is great if you have the Adobe Creative Cloud and if you want to be able to edit on your tablet as well as on your phone to be able to sync things up. InShot has everything stored on your phone, but also comes with more features on the phone. So there's also that. Um, and then some of these other uh, small features that I've talked about as well. Let me know in the comments if there's things that I missed or if you have a particular interest. I hope this is helpful and we'll see you in the next video.